Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, got my nice clothes on today, look at that. Um, so today I've got to address a leaky rear uh, pinion seal on the back of my 1968 um, 280. So uh, it's been a little oil drip I've been noticed occasionally, but now I pulled it out this morning and it's quite a bit worse. I already got, uh, bought a new seal from the Classic Center and the retaining nut. Uh, in anticipation of this because obviously I'm doing it on the 6.3 so I thought I would start a video on uh, changing out that rear pinion seal um, so let's get to it so as I say I pulled out this morning and look how much worse it is before it was just a couple of little drips and I knew that I had to get to it but then it seems to have got to a point all of a sudden it's gone so I'm gonna have to pull the car in today and address that got the wheel off yeah i picked up a nail somewhere along the way also i put my towers underneath both sides as a double backup as well as the six ton jack stands can't be too careful so let's get under there i'll show you what we've found so as you can see it's all covered in oil and uh it's working its way from the front and then obviously as i've been driving it works its way wicks its way back so uh what we're gonna have to do is undo the drive shaft here with these four nuts here i put it in neutral and uh so we can spin the drive shaft okay i got all three nuts uh off and i made a mark on the shaft here just a little mark with a grinder there and uh i'm gonna take this final bolt off and we'll disconnect the shaft from the flange all right there's the flange there you can see some colored paint uh from way back when I think uh, so this uh, drive shaft may be in the way I'm going to consult the manual and see what they say about whether to undo a few of these handbrake brackets so it can drop further out of the way and be pushed aside uh, manual requires also the draining of the oil okay so hopefully you can see this a little tricky filming under here but there is a notch on the flange and I put a tiny little notch in the shaft there being very careful not to touch threads obviously and just right there i think you can see that okay that corresponds with this so the flange will go back in the same position as it was before and so now we've got to peen off these lock tabs of this nut and then use a special castle socket to get that off and then we'll pull the flange off and we should be able to lever the um uh the pinion seal out Okay, sorry about the shadows here. It's very difficult to get a good shot. Oh, there you go. It's my arm. Uh, that bar that I've attached there, that's a stopper bar to stop the flange rotating. All that is is a fan removal bar that I've just bolted to the flange. And hopefully I can get enough torque to undo this nut. Unfortunately, someone's peened it inwards instead of outwards. You don't need to do that. You just need to peen it outwards because that sleeve is captured on that nut anyway. So I had to try and get it out of one of the grooves to be able to get my special socket, this special socket, castle socket, to go on the end there and I'll do that uh, flange nut. So I'm obviously not gonna be able to do that and film at the same time. Uh, so uh, bear with me. I got the nut off. Uh, I did use the impact to get it off and I had to really press hard down on the, impact so the castle socket engaged properly and didn't slip out and chew it up and then it would have been a right pain uh, now obviously i can't use an impact to put it back on it has to be done correctly um, and have proper rotational torque um, so so that nuts off and i'll show you in a sec what i meant about what he did with the nut that made it a little awkward but this flange now now we've marked it so it will go back in the right position again that should wiggle off of this there we go and we're going to take that out on the bench and we'll inspect that so there is the pinion seal and we should be able to lever that off of this carrier so um just to give you an idea what i was talking about with the the nut um this is a new one right the castle nut and these flanges are supposed to be peened over into these slots here right so obviously it doesn't move but this bloke whoever did this he peened it in 
into the landing area where the castle socket goes, right? And that's completely redundant. It shouldn't have done that because this sleeve is already pinned at the factory into the nut, right? Right there. So this nut is captured in this sleeve anyway. So by him peening it over into this area, it made it a pain. See, I had to kind of smoosh that down so that the castle socket landed nicely in there because I was talking to Duke um, that you've got to make sure that that castle socket is pressed snugly into this because the last thing you want is that to ride out and then round off these corners and then you'll be in a world of trouble. You probably have to, you know, get a drift or something and smack it. But I tell you, this is on now. This is not easy to get off. And like I say, I used an impact wrench to get it off. Now, this is going to be fun, putting this one back on, because obviously you have to push onto the socket to make sure it doesn't ride out. And slowly bring up the torque so that we get the correct rotational torque because they're tapered roller bearings on the pinion, you see. And uh, I can explain all that later on. I think you probably already know that from my other videos. But So that's the job. We've got this off now. We've just got to get the seal out of there. Uh, here's the flange. And we've just got to check the running surfaces on the flange here. Make sure there's no excessive wear or damage on the flange where the seal runs obviously you know and this seems fine so yeah it seems fine actually it's shiny you know which is understandable but there's no ridge or anything like that worn or scoring so that seems like that's totally reusable again and there's our notch that corresponds to the uh, the pinion uh, there so we get this orientated back in the right position and then obviously the nut goes and then once that's torqued in that sleeve gets pinned into there not in that way anyway yeah normal pinion seal here um, this end goes in this way so into the differential and then there's a little retaining spring around there and you're supposed to coat this with some uh, uh, some oil so it slides on nicely and it doesn't uh, doesn't you know any chance of the spring popping off you know so what I think I'm going to do is um, this measurement across here is just shy of 50 millimeters so I'm going to get a, I've got an old tool store here that has a bunch of cheap old sockets and stuff and I'm going to get a 50 mil socket that sits plumb on there and then we can gently tap it in and Put a little grease on here it is a chamfered leading edge here if you can look carefully there the edge is chamfered to enable it to go into the housing easier or to the carrier i should say so um i'll look for one of those tomorrow so. now um i fitted the uh, seal into the car i'll show you how to i did that in just a sec but i just wanted to show you the next stage so this is the pinion out of the 6.3 so obviously these are tapered bearings okay opposing each other this way and uh, basically you got the crush sleeve this is the old crush sleeve from the 6.3 okay this has already been crushed and removed that went there like that bearing goes on there that gets pushed on I'm not going to push this on but this pushes down to this uh, crush sleeve here okay now this crush sleeve purpose, obviously most of you know that, is to regulate the amount of pressure or torque you're going to torque down to allow these um, tapered bearings to close in on each other and mate against their respective races. Now, uh, if there's too much torque and this crush too far, obviously these are going to be pressing against that race way too hard and it's going to eventually cook them. You know, they're going to burn the oil and these will probably just burn up. If it's not enough, you're on deceleration and acceleration. This is going to start going back and forth and you're going to get knocking in the rear end. So it's crucial to get this crush to the correct amount. Now, that's all well and good when the axle is out of the car and on a bench and all that good stuff. And you've got the equipment to do it. But while it's in the car, I've been brainstorming how to get this correctly 
um, torque down. Now obviously the crush sleeve is still in the car and we need to bring up the torque of the nut on the flange to the correct amount that we don't over crush this sleeve because then it will be uh, putting too much stress on these bearings and will cook the rear end. So just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with, this is a uncrushed sleeve. Okay, this is brand new from Mercedes and I will show you uncrushed what they are. This is 15.97 millimeters uncrushed. A crushed one is 15. Point five three millimeters okay so we're talking about half a millimeter okay of crush between this one and this one all right and that ain't very much if you can see that's about that much if you can see it in the camera now so it's not a lot of crush if you over crush it uh, you cannot go back on yourself because you'll really you'll lose your preload Okay, so you know if you tighten it down and release, it's going to lose its preload, and then these won't have be loaded. So while the car, while the differentials in the car, we've got this situation where you've got your crush sleeve installed. Obviously, this is still in there. This is just as it is inside the car right now. So when I go to put that fresh nut on there with the flange, obviously, and crank down. I've got to know that I'm not pushing too hard on this uh, bearing to over crush the sleeve. So I spoke to my friend Duke and he used to do it by feel, but he has a lot of experience and uh, you know, a lot of mechanics I think probably do it by feel. Um, and from my, I don't have the specs in front of me, but I believe the specs are just the pinion on its, on its own. With no, uh, not, with no rank, ring gear in, the rotational torque value, uh, or essentially like resistance of this when you're turning it, I think is around 12 or 15 inch pounds, okay? But with the axle and all the ring gear and the axle straight with no brake drag, I think it's around 25 inch pounds. I'll obviously confirm that now. Um, so how do we do that while it's in the car? And we're gonna be using a new nut, okay? That'll go on there, right? And we'll tighten it down to just snug it up. Okay, we'll snug that guy up there in the car. We'll snug it up against the flange, but then we're gonna have to measure it. So I've got this thing. Now this is an inch pound dial torque wrench, okay? You can't use the click type because you need a sort of an analog readout, a continuous readout. And it's nice that it's small in length, you see, because you've got limited space in there. And you've got uh, the memory uh, needle here, so you'll see where it stops at. Okay, so this is a 3 8 inch drive, but this is half inch drive, so you want to use a reducer, but then that's no good because this thing, this is, you're not going to get a reliable reading with this thing floating all over the place and slopping around. You've got to be able to turn this, not with your hand, but with your finger to get a resistance reading on this torque wrench. So, I'll come up with something. So let's back out of here. So we've got our seal on. We've lubricated the flange, so as little as resistance as possible, make sure that nothing's binding up there the flange goes on okay this isn't actually the flange for this this is the 6-3 pinion but anyway let me go and get the other one for this and i'll show you right okay this is the 6-3 flange okay so this guy goes on there right that slides on there i'm not going to bang it on but anyway so that goes on there right then your new nut goes on right so that spins on there now We've got to be able to attach this to that. So what I've come up with, plate of steel that will bolt right across here. I've got a, um, a nut welded onto this plate here and then I just welded a socket on it. And so this is 3 8 inch drive. And the reason I welded it is because you don't want it slopping all over the place, do you? You want that locked and all you want to do is just turn the handle to get your reading.
So that's the idea. So let's get on under there. I'll show you how I put the seal in. Actually, I'll show you on the bench because it's a little easier to do because it's tough filming under there. So what I use, this is another seal. I've got two of these, one for the 6.3 and then one for this. So same type of seal, okay? So it obviously has to go in this way. Little oil on this leading edge. And what I found was the old bearing race from the differential. Anything that goes straight over there and hits on this edge, not this, so you don't risk damaging it, okay? So I just set that on there, held it in place, and then gently tapped this into place until this edge was flush with the carrier. And it went in really nicely, actually. So uh, you might want to use a bit of PVC piping, something like that, just to land inside this ledge here. And making sure that this is lubricated um, when you go to put your flange back in, okay? So that, that rides just like that you see so we'll make sure that's lubricated stuff that in and let's get under there and see if this works all right so hopefully you can see that i've got the camera kind of balancing on a towel here it's very tricky so here's the seal i was able to tap the seal in nice and flush with the carrier also what i did while off camera i zip tied the drive shaft out the way i disconnected the the brake cables, okay, and that's really to give me a lot of room to be able to use our inch pound torque wrench to be able to get our accurate reading. You don't want to be bumping into stuff, do you? Silicon on the splines, okay, that's to stop the chance of any oil and stuff wicking its way on the splines. I've seen some guys do this. Also, I'll help it get back on there. And then we'll put a little lubricant on the flange itself so it runs as smooth as possible on the new seal so it won't interfere with our readings when we do the rotational torque test. Get a rag. It's very cramped here. I wish I'd have... should have lifted the front of the car as well, put it on ramps and lifted the back, but we'll get by. So we've got to make note of where our mark is on the flange to make sure it goes back okay so i've oiled the flange check where our mark is and our mark is there oh i was in the right place okay so that guy's on there we'll move it around a bit move that oil around on the new seal Now, I don't know whether I've told you, but I've taken two wheel, both wheels off and I've leveled the axles as best I can. This one is still down just ever so slightly, but I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference. We've got our nut, okay, new nut, and I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, how is he going to hold that? Well, I've got my holding tool, remember. I want to get that on there. There's going to be a bit of taking things off and putting things on again and i'll show you what i mean these are special sockets for this they're about i think about 90 bucks something like that let's do it up lightly first obviously all right snitch that on there now we're going to go and get our holding tool. Hold on a sec. It's a little tricky to get the camera in the right position under it. Okay, so we've got that locked out of flange, right? So I'm going to torque this guy. Not very much, because we want to, you know, because uh, that sleeve has already been crushed, and I don't want to continue the crush. Not that I think I could, because it takes quite a bit to crush those things, uh, but especially from from nothing you know to get the, the crush started but i'm going to set the torque wrench up 60 inch pounds or so which isn't very much and i should be able to the main thing is is to get this castle nut uh, socket in there without slipping off now i'm just going 
just going to snug it up. I'm not going to go mad. Because I want to do a test. So give me a baseline. I don't know why they didn't just use a regular nut, really. See, that's only 60 pound there. Which is not a lot. Now, I have to take this holding tool off and then attach my other tool. Okay, back. Now, I've attached my tool, okay, and I've set the, set the gauge here, right? Let's go back up to the top a minute. So, set it to zeroed out, and then just... turn in like that one minute let me get back up again let me start again so setting the tool up the top here so we get a best rotation and allow it to start let's see what the reading is you'll have to trust me it's only about just below 10 so that's not enough. I'm going to recheck on the book, but I think we need around 22, 25 inch pounds of rotation or torque, okay, on this guy. But I'm quite happy with the way this is working. You can see I don't, inter I don't go grabbing it like that, but just using my finger, there's a certain amount of breakaway torque to get the thing started, but yeah, this isn't enough. Okay, so what we have to do, we have to take all this off again, and then just, I'm just talking down, I'm creeping up on it, as uh, Duke would say, you just creep up on it, a little bit at a time, um, and like I say, because I don't like the experience Duke has to go by feel, I've got to go by this guy. Let's just make absolutely sure, set that to zero again. Yeah, we're only at about around 10 inch pounds of rotational torque so let's uh, take all this off again i'm at around I, I did it off camera but i'm at about 86 uh, foot pounds of torque on the nut so i've got to go quite a bit more put the holding tool back on i'm going to increase my torque wrench settings by about let's do about 10 just creep up on this because we can't go back so, I'm going to put that on now, like so, like that, and what I've been using is my forearm braced, let me go a little bit more, out right here, one click that way, and then I've got my forearm, and I'm using my whole body to kind of just ease up on this baby. That was barely anything, so I'm going to go up. Just a smidge, around right 10 pounds, because it really barely moved. I'm watching the socket as well. If I think it's moving too much, I won't go to the click stop. That is enough. I'm not going to go anymore. So I'm at around 100 foot-pounds of torque on that boy, and I want to test it again. A little bit of back and forth, but not too big of a deal. Snip those up, they don't need to be tight. Getting that up, zero it out, help it start. Just a fractional increase. Let's have a look. Oh no, we went up. Hold on a minute. Just, uh, let's do another reading. Do a few readings, make sure it's no user error here. We're at about 12 
right now I'm going to confirm with the book but I think it's more like 20 but I'll be back what I've also forgot to tell you uh, off camera I took the rear brake pads out to make sure that we have no drag brake drag whatsoever I just removed those took didn't take a second because uh, that can affect your obviously rotational value if they're dragging um, so we have Translated the in the uh, manual is 20 to 25 centimeters kp, I believe it is, and that's an obsolete term for kilograms forced kgf. So we're going to land at around 19 inch pounds with the conversion of rotational torque with the axles level, well, those levels I got them, and uh, with no brake drag. And I take the, took the wheels off as well. So we're going to tighten up just a smidge more and we'll creep up on this guy to get the force on there. Make sure that's torqued in. That's it. I'm going to check again. Take our time. Make sure we get this right. I've had this on and off several times and it's been a struggle to get the correct torque. Um, um, to actually get enough torque on it to be able to get the inch pounds uh, rotational torque. I think I'm a little shy of it. I'm at around 17. And you've got to watch it because your breakaway torque is substantially more to get started. And then once you get rolling, you've got to kind of get it rolling and then just see uh, Averages there, but your breakaway torque can be quite a lot more, so you've got to ignore that. Uh, like I say, I've taken the brake pads off, so there's no drag. I think I'm a little shy. Uh, we should be more like a 19, 20 inch pounds, but I don't want to risk going too far. I, to be honest, I'd rather obviously be a little on the shy side than the too tight side because you can't back off of this once it's torqued down so I think I'm going to stop right here and call it a day so we are about 17 inch pounds of uh, rotational torque um, with the actual straight brake pads off uh, and I'm it feels it feels good you know there's no play or anything like that, certainly. And what I've been doing is making marks on the nut with a with a pen as well, so I can track my progress and see the marks moving. Uh, so everything is really, really gradual. Um, and I think we're good to go. So let's get this off and we will get it all back together. Put oil in it. And Get our fingers crossed. Well, we've put the uh, drive shaft back on, we've put the uh, brake cables back on, uh, tighten up. I did undo the uh, center yoke for the drive shaft just to give me a little bit more movement. Uh, Evidence bolted back on, I used thread locker on the four bolts for the uh, drive shaft flange just for safety. Uh, peened over that little um, notch in the pinned over the little notch in the sleeve around the uh, pinion nut made sure that was pinned over nicely uh, also what I did um, as I was talking down I wrapped this castle nut with some tape and made marks on here with a pen just so I can visually see how much I'm turning and it was just a little guide for me really but as I say, the biggest challenge of this whole thing was really to get enough torque on it. Um, and I just wanted to review the tools again. Again, this uh, little unit here for this to lock on. This guy, simple 3 8 socket, 18 mil I think this was, onto one of those longer joining nuts, uh, you know, that joins threaded bar together, welded onto a flat plate, simple thing but it enables it to lock on without you worrying about it falling off uh, and then make the uh, enough turn to see a reading and uh, this thing I think this was uh, this torque wrench by Precision Instruments I'm no, not affiliated in any way with them but I thought you might want to know where I picked it up 
Uh, I think it was about 130 bucks, something like that. What's nice, it is very short from the tip of the 3 8 pivot there. It's around nine and a half inches. So you can work in kind of tight spaces. And as I say, I had at least over a quarter of a turn to be able to take my measurement back and forth. Uh, so that is that. Then, what we got? Obviously we got the castle socket. I picked that up, that was about 90 bucks, something like that. Not cheap, obviously, but something you have to have. Uh, this, this locking bar is literally one of those fan things, you know, to remove a fan um, clutch thing from a regular modern car. And I just elongated the hole a little bit and that worked great as a locking tool, you know. Uh, this is the race that I used to punch in the, uh, the seal. Um, that fitted perfectly. Here's one of the others. This is another new seal that I've got for the 6.3. So you can see that fitted over there and I could just hit this edge of this old race and then it went in nice and flush. Lubricated the, um, the seal so we got a nice uh, smooth contact on the flange without any sticking. So that's that. Uh, simple, cheapo seal removal tool that I hooked out the old seal tool and that is about it and obviously a beer at the end of the day um, so there you have it okay that's about it for today uh, wasn't such a bad job a little cramped under there I should have lifted the front of the car up on ramps I've done that before and then jacked the back off a much uh, much more room to work in but we got by biggest pain in the job was getting enough torque on that nut at the end there uh, very awkward there, using my whole body to talk down on it, but I think we got it. We're at uh, around 17, 18 inch pounds from the last measurement I did, uh, and I think that will be fine. I didn't want to over tighten, that was the main thing, main goal. So, everything feels good. Again, like I say, I removed the brake pad so there's no drag, and so we get an accurate reading. Put those back in. And uh, that is it, really. So I will report in the coming weeks and months to make sure that everything is running fine with this because the weather's getting better now and uh, I'll be running this car a lot. So this is the one I tend to leave in the garage and not drive in the rain. So um, next thing up, the 4.5 I want to bring in. Uh, I want to do the speedometer cable. That's something that's coming up. that has been broken for a long time. I have it here. I just want to get that fixed up. Uh, speedometer cable and uh, I've replaced the radiator hoses and all that but uh, uh, there's a few other things I want to do I may well replace the timing chain on there as a preventative maintenance thing because it's getting up there in mileage and I want to make sure that's got many more miles to come so um, I think that is it please hit like share subscribe and I'll see you in the next one take care guys bye bye